go for interval of convergence. And the last example, we did not test the endpoints, uh, but let's go ahead and test those endpoints on this example when we get there. All right, so we're gonna use a ratio test just like before. This is a fraction, so let's write in the reciprocal product form. So I'm gonna write it instead of divide by an, write it as a product one over an. So I see n appearing thrice. So make sure all those get replaced by n plus one. So you can't just change one or two of them. So we got n plus one x to the 4n plus 1 divided by 2, 4n plus 1. Now the reciprocal, that's just copy everything that's there, but reciprocate it. What mistake did I make? Yeah, so I did not group up properly. So I need to distribute my four across all these. Also, in the first one, the plus one in the numerator is not supposed to be raised to the power of four. Oh, absolutely, yeah. All right, so the way we are going to simplify is we're going to re-associate uh, the multiplication. So it'll be commuting terms. So let's put the simplest terms out front. I think the base two will be probably the easiest term. So we got two to the four n divided by two, four n. I'm distributing the four, two to the four n plus four. That's our first grouped up term. Now I'll do the base n and n plus one. n plus 1 to the 4th over n to the 4th. And last, we have our base x. So what did I forget to do that I told you we needed to do for the ratio test? There's only one hypothesis on the ratio test. So we're supposed to put absolute value I'll do that in purple here. Now, do I actually need absolute value? Let's go term by term and decide what might be negative. So I'll zoom in on this, on our last version here. All right, can you raise two to any power and get negatives? Nope, so our first term, that's okay. Second term, n plus one, to the fourth and n to the fourth. Can that ever be negative? Now our n starts at one, it gets bigger, doesn't get smaller. So those are positive. All right, x is usually the only term you have to worry about. Why will this particular combination never be negative? What's times four? Yeah, because it's an even power. So we got even powers right here. No matter what n is from one and greater, it's always going to be an even, because they're multiplied by uh, four, basically. So we're always gonna have even powers. So this particular example, I actually don't need any absolute values on. So what I'm gonna do is just move this absolute value over to there. And then the next line, I'm going to completely not write it. So now we get to reduce everything. So we got common powers here, so subtracting powers. We have two to the fourth in our denominator. N and N plus one, they don't really combine except the powers are the same. So I can write it as N plus one over N, whole thing raised to the fourth. And last up, we have X to the fourth. And it should be really obvious here, I don't need the absolute value. It's X to the fourth. Any any value of x, positive or negative, is going to be positive right there. All right, so this is a n plus 1 over a n. Now we're going to take a limit. As n approaches infinity, 
AM plus one over AN. And this is of course rho. If you don't feel like writing rho, you can just write P, that's fine too. out one over two to the fourth and x to the fourth so it may look like I'm doing some shady math but why am I allowed to bring those terms outside the limit So, well, they're not totally constant because I see x, but why is x constant with this limit? Yeah, only have to watch out for the n's. So x's are constant. If x had a power that had an n in it, this would be very bad to do. But there's no power of n. So there's all the terms I brought outside have no n terms whatsoever. So they're constant. All we have to do is take this limit here. I think our projector is going to overheat. That happened a few times last quarter. Uh, so I'm just going to talk and we'll just keep going. All right, so take that limit that we have with the ends in it. It should be really easy to take. What rule could you use? You can use L'Hopital's rule because you'll get infinity over infinity to the fourth. So you can use L'Hopital's rule or you can do a little bit of algebra and solve it the way we did in Calc 1. So that limit m plus one over n, that fourth power, you can basically bring that outside the limit. So it's really just comes coming down to the limit of m plus one over n. And then whatever that value is, you raise it to the fourth power and that will be your limit. Uh, I think we'll, we'll be back. All right, so what is the limit of m plus one over n? It's like a layup in Calc 2. It's 1. Because if you look at the, as it's a polynomial, they're both degree 1 terms. You just look at the leading term right there. They're both degree 1, so their coefficients are going to be a 1 and a 1, which I'll write here in green. And maybe the projector will turn back on. So what I was talking through was, if we look at this limit right here, it's basically degree one polynomial over degree one. So you just look at the highest power terms. Their coefficients are both one. So our limit will just be one over one, which is just one. The other way you could do this, you could bring that fourth power outside the limit, which I did over here on the right side. So I basically brought the fourth power outside the limit why am I allowed to do that? So when your function is continuous, you can take limit x approaches a f of x equals f of lim x approaches a 
of x. And I call this in calc 1 pushing the limit through a continuous function. So when your function is continuous, you can push the limit through it. And what function is this specifically? It's the f raised x to the fourth power. So it's raising to a fourth power is definitely continuous. So that's in the green is what I used to rearrange that limit at the top of the board. And so either way you look at it, the limit's going to be 1 or 1 to the fourth. So our row value is just the x to the fourth over 2 to the fourth. And the ratio test converges when rho is less than 1. So we got x to the fourth over 2 to the fourth is less than 1. We're now going to solve for x. So this is just algebra here. x to the fourth is less than 2 to the fourth. Now, <clears throat> we have to be careful. I'm going to take a fourth power. If these were both squared and we took a square root, what would I get? I would sort of get this. But what do you do when you take an even root of an even power? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. So we're going to get plus or minus, and remember to put it on the variable side, not the side that is already positive. So we can split this negative x less than 2, or regular x less than 2. I multiply by negative 1, so it's x greater than negative 2. And then take the mirror image of the inequality. So x is greater than negative 2 or less than 2. 0 is in the middle, so I can see the radius is 2. So we're going to converge between negative 2 and 2, and now we're going to check the boundaries. So what happens at negative 2, what happens at positive 2? So I'll start with negative 2, that was summation. <coughs> n to the fourth, negative 2 to the 4n over 2 to the 4n. <coughs> n is 1 to infinity. All right, so when we check this endpoint, we're just going to do a little algebra here and reduce. So I have negative 2 to the 4n. So that's negative 1 to the 4n times 2 to the 4n over 2 to the 4n. So negative 2 is negative 1 times 2. And the reason I did this is so I can just completely cancel 2 to the 4n, 2 to the 4n. So those go away. Why does negative 1 to the 4n go away as well? An even power of negative 1. So it's always going to be positive 1 because it's even. So that cancels out, not because there's another term to knock it out, but because it cancels itself out. It's always 1. All right, summation n equals 1 to infinity n to the fourth. <coughs> Converge or diverge? Diverge and y. So we have to use a theorem here, or a test. What happens when n gets big? What happens to the terms when n gets big? Gets bigger. The terms get bigger. So we keep adding bigger and bigger and bigger numbers. So we're definitely going to get infinity. So this one is very divergent. Not only does it not get small, it does the opposite. It's getting big. So this is very divergent. So we say diverge by the nth term test. The nth term only tests for divergence. If you do not know these tests, if you see nth term test for divergence and don't know what it is, you need to read chapter the beginning of chapter 10 for all the different tests. And there's about six tests or so that you need to know. So why is it only for divergence? Because if you say I had n over n squared, 
wouldn't that be convergent? That would not pass the test for divergence. Oh, so I couldn't, so this divergence test would be inconclusive because the terms get smaller. Mm -hmm. However, it depends on if they get smaller fast enough. This particular one would reduce to one over N. And why would that diverge? Again, not by the nth term test. P series of one. But this is a P equals one series right here. So this would diverge because it's a P series, which you could check with the integral test is how we got that originally. So if it looks like something you could integrate, integral test is great. Uh, so now we're gonna check the other endpoint. So negative two is out, so we know for sure that's going to be open on that side. Now we're going positive 2. This one's even easier, or I should say really just as easy. So just straight away, the base 2 terms completely cancel out. And I think I'm just going to say diverge by C above. That would be good enough. All right, and so positive two is out. So our interval is the open interval. Interval of convergence, negative two to two open on both sides. And we're gonna go ahead and plug it in real quick on web work. All right, so once you type it in, uh, you could hit preview, but because I don't count attempts, there's really no point. The only thing the preview does, it gives you a nicer, this is a pretty easy thing to type in, but if it was a huge fraction with square roots, it would be a pain to see if your parentheses are matching up. Uh, but I would just hit submit, and then the preview should always look like what your notes look like. All right, so green means correct, red obviously not correct. <laughs> 